In this video we are going to be using a brand new program called Tinkercad to do a little bit of 3D modeling. In our first project today we are going to create this yellow desktop caddy. So as you can probably guess desktop caddies are used to hold various stationary items that you would find on your desk such as pens and pencils and scissors and so on. Okay, it's a fairly simple design. It's going to show us the basics of how Tinkercad works. Just to show you what it will look like when it's finished in Tinkercad. Okay, this is our desktop caddy in 3D. Okay, and basically it was sent over to a 3D printer, printed out, and then we had one desktop caddy that we could use on our desks. Alrighty, so to get started on making this caddy, what you need to do is you need to go to the Tinkercad website first of all. So it's tinkercad.com. Once you're on the website, you need to sign up for a brand new account using your school email address. And once you've activated that account, you should be able to sign in and create a new design. When you click on that button to create a new design, you will end up with a screen that looks sort of like this. I'll just move my work plane into view. It'll look something like this. You'll end up with a blue work plane in the middle of your page. And the work plane is just the platform that we build our 3D models on. Alrighty. So I've got an empty work plane at the moment, ready for us to start creating our desktop caddy. So to get started on our caddy, we're going to insert a simple shape to start with. And the way we do that is we just come over to the right hand side here and in our basic shapes menu, scroll down until you see the polygon, which is this blue option here. Pick it up with your mouse by clicking on it and dragging it over to your work plane and just dropping it somewhere on your work plane. Now before I go any further, I just want to show you that you're not limited by the basic shapes here. This is a drop down box and you can choose all sorts of different um, pre-drawn shapes here to drag onto your work plane. So you can do text and numbers, for example, or you've got uh, connectors, whatever they are. There you go, different connectors that you can bring out. There are lots of different designs that have been drawn for you, but we're just going to stick with basic shapes for today. All right, so back to our desktop caddy, we've got our polygon drawn on the page. Now, if you click on that with your mouse, you can change the solid color here from blue to any color that you like. I'm going to go with yellow, just in just like my example, but you can choose another color if you would like. All right, just click off it and you can see you've got a clear view now of your uh, polygon on the work plane. If you'd like to see it a little bit closer, simply scroll up on your mouse to zoom in. If you get too close, scroll down to zoom back out. If you'd like to fly around your model here, just hold down the right button on your mouse and move your mouse around. And you can see that you can orbit around the work plane and have a good look at your uh, model from different angles. Okay, now you can also hold shift and hold down your right mouse button just to move up and down, left and right. So it won't actually orbit around your shape, but it will move left and right, up and down just to give you a better angle of your design. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in fairly close like I have here, and we're gonna to start to resize this shape. So you will need to click on it first of all, so that you get these bounding boxes up. Okay, as you hover over these little squares, you can see dimensions appear, which are in millimeters. Okay, so what I want you to do is actually resize this polygon, and we need to make it about 45 millimeters wide. So if I click on this little square in the corner now, you can see that we're roughly 17 millimeters wide at the moment. We've got to get that number to 45. Okay, so the way we do that is simply click on any of the corners and start dragging the shape out. Okay, now as we do that, you can see that it sort of loses its shape. You can deform this polygon simply by dragging it in any old direction. Okay, so I'm going to undo what I just did just to go back to the original shape. And instead of just dragging out a corner, I'm going to hold shift while I do it. So I'm going to hold shift and then drag out the corner. And that keeps my shape in proportion so it doesn't lose its nice original shape. Okay, and we're looking to get this number down here, so the width of our shape, to roughly 45 millimeters. It doesn't have to be bang on 45. Okay, it can be a little bit over like I've got there. I've got 45.66. That's fine. So let's roll with that. We've now got our shape to 45.66 millimeters wide. The other thing I want to do is I want to change the height 
of this um, shape. So the way we change the height is we click on it once and choose this square up the top of the shape. All we need to do is simply pull it up. And as we pull it up, you can see the height here changing. We want to get it up to 80 millimeters in size, like so. So we've now got a polygon that's 80 mil high, roughly 45 millimeters in width. If you go for a bit of an orbit around it, it will look something like that. Okay, so you can start to see our desktop caddy coming together already. The next job we need to do is hollow it out. Okay, so that can be a little bit tricky. Um, so what we need to do is draw a second polygon. It's a similar size to this, just slightly smaller. So I am going to grab another polygon from my basic shapes panel over here and drag it onto the work plane. I'm going to hold shift and drag out from the corner here to 40 millimeters in size. or well, just near enough to 40 millimeters in size. It's going to be a little bit different um, to the other one we drew. One thing that is the same though is going to be the height. So what I want you to do is just click on the new polygon and pull it up until it is 80 millimeters in size. If you don't want to pull it up, you can actually click on this box here and type 80 and press enter. And that will keep it nice and accurate and get your polygon 80 mil in size. Alrighty, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually raise this new polygon off the work plane. We want to lift it up a little bit. Okay, so the way we do that is we click on it once and hit this black arrow at the top and just pull up. We want to come up three millimeters. So this little number here, just type in three and press enter. And you can see now it's got a shadow underneath it, which tells you that this polygon is actually raised off the surface of the work plane. Okay, so the next step to hollowing out this yellow shape is to basically combine these two polygons with the blue one smack bang in the center of the yellow one. Now you can drag these over and probably drop it into the center and you'd go, do a pretty good job of getting them um, close to being the center of one another. But a quick way to do it and a very accurate way to do it is to click and drag over both your shapes so they're both selected. Head up to the align button at the top and click that once. And you'll see these black dots appear around your shape. You need to click the one in the middle down the bottom and then the one in the middle going up the left hand side. And then you can just go and turn the align tool back off. And you can see now that we've got our blue polygon inside of our yellow polygon. All right. Next thing we need to do is click on this blue polygon, not the yellow one, just the blue one. And in the properties up here, I want you to choose the one that says hole. That's just that gray stripey button. And that's going to basically make it disappear and cut a hole into our yellow polygon. Now it's a bit hard to see at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight both of those and we're going to group them together and the way we do that is just go up to this option here where it looks like a circle, uh, a circle and a square have been joined together. You just group it, click off it and you can see now we've got our um, polygon there hollowed out. Alright, so that's looking good. I'm going to move that to the left hand side of my work plane and I'm going to copy that and then paste it in. Now you can use copy and paste up the top here or you can use control C and control V for the shortcuts on your keyboard. So I'm going to go to the top view. I'm just going to click on it and press control C and then control V to paste it in. Okay, and we're going to move this second one across until it overlaps pretty much perfectly with the first polygon like so. And I'm going to do that one more time. Control C to copy, control V to paste, move it across until they link up and you've got something looking like that. That's the start of our desktop caddy, looking pretty sweet. Now we need two more of these polygons copied and pasted in, so I'm going to copy and paste that middle one. I'm going to drag it down here until they're on top of one another. Let me see. It's got to be perfect. You can use your arrow keys to nudge it around a bit. I think that looks pretty good. I'll just copy and paste this one. And plonk it over there. Oh, something like that near enough is good enough, I think. But that's pretty much our desktop caddy made. Okay, so there's not a lot to it. Um, one thing we can do just to spice things up a bit is change the size of those um, polygons, if you would like. 
So you can make some bigger, make some smaller. Um, the way we do that is we simply just go back to Tinkercad and we click on one of these shapes. And like we did before, grab this rectangle here and just pull it down. So I'm going to go to about 40 mil for that one. Click on the one next to it and oh, I'll say 55. Looks all right. Um, if you have a look at this one, so we'll make this one a bit smaller. Let's go down to say 60. And we'll bring this one down to about 70. There you go. So you can have different sized um, options there for your little desktop organizer. It's up to you what you do with it there. And you can click on these two and change the colors up. If you want to do a more multicolored, that's all well and good. It's up to you. Might as well do mine. So have a look. Something like that if you want to do yours multicolored. Now if they're overlapping a little bit too much, like these red and blue ones are, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to nudge them around. Just split them up a little bit so they look all right. Okay, that's pretty good. So that is our desktop caddy all done and dusted. If you wanted to send that to the 3D printer now, what you would need to do is you need to go to export up the top here and export it as an STL file. Okay. So that just downloaded, as you can see right there, as an STL file. You can send that into your slicing software and then send it to the 3D printer for a final print. Now, full size, this one is actually quite a slow print. It will take about 10 hours, believe it or not, just to print that desktop caddy. All right, but well worth it in the end because you will get some good use out of it. Um, when you are finished, it automatically saves into the cloud, so you don't need to save. Um, you can just go back to Tinkercad to the dashboard that is and get ready to make the next um, project.